We don't need a new version of the OGL or the Orc. What we need is to come up with some sort of plan for a sustained counter-marketing insurgency. Hi, it's your old pal King Waspinator. Welcome back to Total Party Skills. Everyone's scrambling for damage control right now, and to a certain degree that is what the, uh, the proposed ORC is an example of. Uh, people trying to maintain the fidelity of their individual projects and uh, their ability to maintain their livelihoods. Perfectly understandable, does need to be addressed. However, what about the long-term thinking here? We're, we're dungeon masters, game masters, storytellers, lore keepers, whatever it is we're choosing to label ourselves. We're used to thinking a few steps ahead of what, what's currently going on on the table, so to say. And so we should apply that thinking to the real-world situation we find ourselves in. Consider uh, how uh, Hasbro's marketing towards Dungeons and Dragons is going to change, is already changing, as they want to push it into this virtual tabletop environment and cut free the chaff of the traditional old-fashioned role-playing game. People. Uh, they're going to still be pouring millions, if not billions of dollars into marketing, you know, uh, putting the D&D &D name out there, not just in commercials, but through product placement, strategic uh use of the, the the name and stuff like you know have dr strange name drop them show some kids playing them on netflix get rick and morty to make a few D, D references stuff like that they'll keep that up but all the marketing will be drawing people who are attracted by these like little tidbits i smell something that is that something that could be fun and new and interesting what is that and they come wandering over oh my god and instead of finding the role-playing game hobby, they'll find the virtual tabletop, and as new people are recruited in, they will be recruited into thinking of this as a virtual tabletop thing, where a computer gives you a little imagined scenarios and responds to your every little question and request. Thanks, chat GPT. Now, um, meanwhile, the role-playing game hobby, as it is, post- OGL crisis 2023. Uh, it, we're all still going to be here. We're all still going to want to play the games we want to play in the style that we want to play them. But role playing games have always had a issue of like there's a churn. There's a there's a slow attrition of people who drop out, especially players. But even DMs just get tired of it. You grow older, you grow disinterested. Your life becomes more and more full of stuff. You put it down. Maybe you might come back to it ten years later. Maybe you won't. Uh, but, you know, a little, little bit like by little bit, you know, uh, the fandom does shed people. But that's balanced by the fact that you have a new crop of younglings who, who are attracted to the game and come in. Uh, they, they hear it's cool or their friends are into it. It's somehow, some way they get introduced to it. And slowly but surely you ideally get some sort of stable mass. Maybe even if you're lucky, you can bring in more people than you're losing. You can actually get some growth. And right now, the role-playing game community is sitting at the end of several years of growth, where you had more people were brought in than were being lost. However, with no marketing directing anyone incidentally to other role-playing games by directing people to the D&D &D role-playing game, uh, the amount of new people coming in is, is going to shrink because they're going to be captured and contained for the virtual tabletop version of the role-playing game, not the old-fashioned pen and paper using your brain experience that we're used to. And so uh, that will cause a slow attrition of the hobby. And, you know, individual writers, uh, whatever the new orc turns out to be, Paizo, all the companies that already exist, you know, they, they'll, they'll be able to float along for a little bit. Might They all might see a bit of a, a surge in sales themselves as all these people who are used to playing the t tabletop version of D&D &D have to, you know, find a new home, you know, either through the fact that D&D is just cutting them off entirely or that they're not wanting to jump through the hoops that D&D is setting out there for them to have to jump through to get to continue to have the exact experience that they want. Um, but in a couple of years, then what? No new people coming in, the normal uh, pressures of life that cause people to drop out uh, and, and no real marketing to draw in the youth. Uh, we need to figure out a way to make sure find some way to promote other games and, and get teenagers and young adults specifically uh, to be interested in playing these other games. And at the same time, if we can discourage them from playing 
one D and D in the virtual tabletop, that'd be even better. But we got to do something to keep the ecosystem of the hobby alive, and uh, that's gonna, you know, like take some sort of effort. And uh, I don't know. I mean, there's certainly things like we we know some of the things to do. You can get product placement, TV shows, actually throw it out in that proper advertising budget and so on and so forth but who's got the ability to do that uh are probably our best rallying points to rally around for recruiting new people is probably now our Talsorian games and modifius because they got some of the more hotter uh you know uh, uh intellectual property based role-playing games like cyberpunk is you know doing well and it's resonating in the current year very well so shall we say and with the current year audience uh, and Modifius has stuff like Dune and Star Trek, and I know there's, you know, like, people who make the Expanse game. There's it, any anyone, any game company that has, you know, uh, control over a titled bit of role-playing game uh, setting, something based on something that's out there that people know about. Uh, I guess probably Vampire the Masquerade, since they still have video games, might be another good one. Although it's sad to have to rely on video game recruitment to keep the role-playing game hobby alive, but... I guess maybe we're just doomed to forever be parasites. I don't know. These things need to be thought through. It can't just all be about, like, creating a new common license for everyone to use. Uh, uh, it's not going to be much use to anybody in five years. The, the whole hobby is atrophied to a point where, you know, there's really nothing to do here except give in and give Wizards of the Coast their fucking $30 a month. Anyway, that's about it. Until next time, stay waspidated.